How many preachers does it take to figure out how to turn a microphone on? I'm just holding it. So, <laughs> hang on a minute. We got issues. There we go. Hallelujah. Let's try that. In here. Sing a verse or something. <laughs> I'm for that. He said he didn't know nothing to play from Jenny. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Good to have Brother Sidney Weaver, our friend. Preacher, you make yourself, well, I can't say this to every preacher, but you preach as loud as you want, on whatever you want, as long as you want. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. <clears throat> Exodus chapter number 4, verses 1 through 5. Exodus chapter number 4, verses 1 through 5. Let me say to Pastor and First Lady, thank you so much for the opportunity to come. I was in Florida coming right up 95. Brother Pastor called me and said, uh, won't you stop in and preach? I'm going to just tell on him. He said, uh, you want to come in on Wednesday night if you want to work something out later, whatever you want to do. I said, well, if it's whatever I want to do, I want to come in Wednesday night and work something out for late. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I certainly appreciate the privilege, and my wife would kill me if I didn't tell First Lady. She said to make sure to tell you she's sorry she couldn't be here, and Bryce and her love you and thank the world of you. I mean, I'm not just saying it. Yeah. I've talked to some folk down in Florida that know you, and I said, my wife cares so much about her that if somebody said something about her, if she wasn't around, I'd have to get a hold of my wife. I'm married a redneck woman. Yeah, amen. I'd have to get a hold of her, but I certainly appreciate the privilege to be here, and I pray that God will speak to us from the pages, right off the page of His Word. Amen. Exodus chapter number 4, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read verse number 1. Exodus 4 and verse number 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Moses has been gone from Egypt some 40 years. He has been watching his father-in-law sheep on the backside of the wilderness yeah. in what he believes to be obscurity. Yeah. We can tell by verse number one, God is commissioning and commanding him to return into Egypt. But Moses is living as a victim. He is yeah. living in this in defeat, in despair. He believes that everything is lost and yeah. everything is gone and he's ruined everything and his spiritual life pretty much is over. What yeah. he does not realize is that those in bondage in Egypt don't need a prince to come down there and right. live out. They need a shepherd to yeah. come down yeah. there. And for 40 years, God has been preparing Moses taking all that prince in the palace off of him yeah. and putting that shepherd down in his heart to lead his people. But yeah. you can see here how he's a victim. Let me just stop right here and say God never intended for his people to be victims. Right. He never intended for us to live in despair. Right. He never intended for us to live in defeat. Yeah. But to live in victory. Let me say yeah. this. When I preach tonight, I'm not talking about getting victory. I'm not talking about seeing a win in every little old thing. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. Yeah. We are already more than conquerors. Yeah. When I say living in victory, I'm talking about enjoying yeah. and experience yeah. the victory we have in the Lord Jesus. No matter your situation, no matter your surroundings, yeah. it doesn't matter if you look like you're winning or not. Yeah. You ought to be living in victory. Here yeah. Moses yeah. is living in defeat. He believes nobody will understand. Nobody will help him. He has become a victim, but he saw a bush that burned and yeah. was not consumed. And he said, I'll turn aside. And what he does in chapter 3 is have a personal encounter with God. Now I tell you this, you'll never be saved until you've had a personal encounter with God. And you'll never be much of a servant of God. You'll never get much accomplished for the work of God until you've had a personal encounter with God. He's having a personal encounter. Poops slip as he is. Shoulders are all drooped down. Nobody will believe that. Whining. He's not, I, I like to describe him as a droopy the dog Christian. Yeah. Some yeah. of you young folk have to Google that after yeah. service. But Drew the Dog was a cartoon character. Yes. 
Yeah. And his jaws hung word uh, like that. Yeah. And he looked at the camera and said, I'm so happy. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you happy? Yeah. yeah. That's where Moses is in the feet. I'm telling you, I'm heartbroken yeah. as I travel up and down the road and preach in a different church every week to see how many of God's people I'm talking about yeah. born again. Blood washed going to heaven when they die, living in despair, living in defeat, yeah. living as a victim. That's victim talk. They're not believing. God has sending him down there. But yeah. now, in front of that bush that burned and was not consumed, Moses has a moment to shook off all of that defeat, to quit being a victim and live like a victor. This is his moment to live in victory right now because if he's going to live in victory, when he gets back down to Egypt, he's got to live in victory right now. Yeah. And if he's going to live in victory when he faces Pharaoh, when he marches them out of the land of Egypt, when he crosses the Red Sea and spends time in the wilderness, yeah. he's going to have to live in victory right now. Don't think you'll get it when you get down there. If you don't have it when you're living right here. And for a few minutes tonight, I want to preach on that thought. Living in victory right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. First of all, we'll see it right here in these verses in the stick of Moses. Yeah. Look at verse number two. The Lord said unto Moses, unto him, what is that in thine hand? Moses, he said, a rod. Now, I'm not trying to change the King James Bible. I'm just going to let you know I'm King James, top of my head, bottom of my feet. I didn't even know there was another one. Yeah. But I do have the Weaver's Country Commentary yeah. on the Bible. Now, it's not the Bible, but it's Weaver's Country Commentary. And yeah. by being a redneck country boy, when I see the word rod, I immediately think of a stick. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, what you need to understand, and we need to understand tonight, is the reality of this stick. It's just an old dead piece of wood. Yeah. But Moses is a shepherd. And that rod is a shepherd's rod. Yeah. It is a shepherd's stick. It represents at that moment in Moses' life everything that he has, everything that he is, yeah. everything he th uh, thinks he'll ever be. It's his destiny. It's his dream. Uh, it's yeah. his, and basically, it represents his life. He is holding it in his hand. And God says... Uh, what is that in your hand? And he said, my stick. In other words, he said, my life, my dreams, my everything, I'm holding it in my hand. That's the reality of yeah. this stick. But then we see the release. Yeah. Oh, fixing to move out of the land of defeat into the land of victory. Lord's death. And he said, cast it on the ground. Weaver's Country Dictionary Biblical Word said that word cast means to rear back and throw away from. Yeah. He said yeah. throw it away from you. Turn it loose. Yeah. Let it go. This is Moses' moment. You're going to live in despair. You're going to live in obscurity. Or you're going to live in yeah. victory right yeah. now. And yeah. Moses takes all that he has and throws it down on the ground. Wonder what God is doing in your life. Yeah. If you just take everything you got. You say, I can't have victory. I'm not experiencing victory. Maybe you're holding on to something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. ahead. As one of my preacher friends says, you might well nod your little baby's head up and down because yeah. you know I'm going to tell it right. Yeah. You get up and come yeah. to this yeah. altar. Yeah. You'll lay everything on the altar yeah. and say amen and pick about half of it back yeah. up and yeah. take it back to the pew yeah. with you yeah. and wonder why the burden's too heavy. Wonder why your lips are dropping yeah. on the yeah. ground. I'll tell you what, whatever you got, cast it on the ground yeah. before him yeah. yeah. and live yeah. in victory. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is seen in the stick of Moses. Yeah. We move on through the text. We'll see that it is in the success of Moses. What's verse 3 again? He cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. Moses fled from it. Yeah. Now, I, I use the lately, Pastor, I've always tried to find one little old place in every message to rub folk the wrong way. Uh, I ain't going to do it tonight, but I am going to say this. Yeah. Serpents, snakes, are not pets. Right, right, right. Yeah. I went to Bible college. I took a class called hermeneutics. Right. I remember two things about the hermeneutics class. One had the prettiest book, textbook I ever seen in my life. It was this beautiful book. I just carried it around because it looked so pretty. Yeah. 
And the only other thing I remember is something called the law of first mention. Right. When the serpent, that law says when something's first mentioned in the Bible, whatever it is then, it'll be all the way through the Bible. Yeah. If we find that serpent in the garden, you know what it was? Yeah. There's a devil in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. You get all the way over to Revelation. He's a serpent, the yeah. devil. He's yeah. a Lucifer, the slew foot. Yeah. He's a devil all the way. Nowhere in the Bible is the serpent good for anything. He bites him in the wilderness. Yeah. They have to put him up on the pole. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's killing I might get a remedy. I mean, yeah. the serpent's no good. And yeah. he throws it down, and Moses, being a real man, flees from it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knows there's nothing good about a death. Right. So yeah. us need to learn how to stay away from death. Yeah. 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 But what happens here is in his success. Don't look too successful. When he throws that stick down and gives everything up, let well, us quit right there. We come to the altar and lay everything down and then wonder why things didn't go exactly how we thought they was going to go. Because yeah. giving everything to God is just the start of what God's doing. Right. It's not the end all, be all. Right. It's got a lot more to do with Moses yeah. to get him where he wants him. And he throws that stick down. Man, you think it turn into a blessing. You think it turn into a Cadillac. You yeah. think it turn into real good health and something real good. But it turns into a devil. It yeah. turns into a snake. And Moses turns and flees from it. He runs from it. Yeah. yeah. But the Lord says, look at verse number 4. If it says, it says. Verse 4, the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. Yeah. 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 Uh, being a preacher, I got a great imagination. So when I read a story like this, I see it in my mind. Yeah. I see Moses before that bush. The Lord tells him to throw down everything he got, everything he is, and he casts it on the ground, and it becomes a snake. I don't know exactly what snake, maybe a cobra, and it rears up and hisses and moves. And Moses does the right thing. He flees. He runs from that serpent. Then the Lord says, "Hold on, Moses." Take your hand. And he doesn't just tell him to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. He tells him to take it by the tail. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't know how you see it. I don't see Moses trying to make moves. Right. Sneak around. Right. Get around behind him. So how in the world, if that snake's reared up, coming after Moses, how in the world, Lord, how in the world is he going to get it by the tail? I'm going to tell you what I think happened. I believe what God is telling him here is Moses, it's time to quit running. Yeah. You've been running from Egypt. Yeah. You've been yeah. running from what yeah. you did there. Yeah. You've been running from Pharaoh. You've been trying to hide from that. Everybody, have too many of us yeah. can't yeah. live in victory because yeah. we're running from something in the past 40 years ago. Yeah. We're running from yeah. a sin we committed. We're running from a mistake we made. Right. And now we're running from every little devil. It's amazing how the world's told the church yeah. go over the corner and stand and take yeah. a time out. Let me just tell you by the good grace of God, I'm going to lift my voice up like a trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to go along yeah. to get along. Yeah. I ain't coming under the umbrella of love. I ain't going to mix it all together. Right. Right. It all tastes good. Yeah. I started out an old slaughterhouse gospel preacher. Yeah. And by the grace of God, I'm going to finish yeah. the same way. Yeah. I'm going to wear a back preach it like God wrote it. Yeah. Let yeah. the chip fall where it may. Right. And God yeah. tells him, Moses, it's time to quit running. And you're going to have to do something. And stop. You're going to have to blow up. You're going to have to find some courage. Right. And here, yeah. Moses. Now, you remember, he's in front of that bush. He's as close to God as he's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the very presence of God. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I think happened. Moses is fleeing from that serpent. God tells him to stop running. Yeah. And reach down and take him. Not just take him. Watch him by him. Take him by the tail. How am I going to get around behind? Here's what I think happened. Moses stopped and realized, I got Jehovah God. Yeah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right, right here with me. Yeah. I believe Moses turned around so full of God, 
so covered. You remember when he got on the mountain and come down, his face was glowing. I believe you could see God all over Moses. And when he turned around, I think that serpent saw God in Moses. And you know what he did? He turned tail and run from Moses. I tell you what we need in this day. We need some folk full of God. Yeah. We're running. Yeah. We turn around and swell up yeah. in the Holy Ghost, if you will. Because yeah. every little old devil ain't as mean as he thinks he is. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't as big as he thinks he is. Yeah. Pharaoh ain't as powerful as he thinks he yeah. is. And this serpent ain't as scary as he's yeah. trying to be. Yeah. When man or woman gets full of God, yeah. remember thou unto him that's able to do exceeding upon yeah. the yeah. of all yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Hold on. The end of the verse said, according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah. Get you out of the way and let the power of God in you yeah. be the power of God through you. Yeah. And you'll put this Bible said yeah. that one would chase a thousand yeah. and two ten thousand. I know, I know you're a Bible student. You're going to say wrong dispensation. You're going to say that's old covenant. Yeah. Say God. Yeah. Say God. Yeah. And yeah. Moses yeah. swells up and the serpent turns around. It's about time we put the world on the run. Yeah. The devil on the run. Yeah. Liberal on the run. Yeah. Instead of running and hiding ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We live in victory. Amen. Right now. Amen. Reaches down, grabs it by the tail, and it becomes a rock stick. Yeah. Again in his hand. Success is seen in his courage. Yeah. Amen. Man, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. We are the scaredest Christian yeah. in yeah. all the world. Oh yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you'll have to jump ahead with me to chapter 4 and verse 20. Yeah. We'll see the success not only in Moses' courage, but in Moses' change. Something gonna change in Moses. Oh, yeah. Remember verse 1, he said, they won't believe it. They'll say that the Lord God has not appeared to me. Look at verse chapter 4 and verse number 20. Moses took his wife and his sons, set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. Moses now has changed. Yeah. He has a new purpose. Yeah. He's not watching sheep anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He's going back to where it started from. I don't know if this is exactly biblically, theologically correct, but a lot of times where you left God, yeah. I'll be right where you can pick him up again. Yeah, right. yeah and oh, sometimes yeah. you're going to have to go back to where it all started. And he didn't say that he put him on an animal and headed back to Egypt or to go to Egypt. It said to return yeah. to Egypt. Yeah. Had to go back where all of this started. Yeah. You're going to have to face your giant. You're going to have to face your fear. You're going to have, but when you get changed, when you got a new purpose, it's not watching sheep in obscurity yeah. anymore. Yeah. It's going down there and doing what God yeah. has called me to do. Amen. Watch this. He not only had a new purpose, but this is one of the most powerful verses in all the Bible. Look at the end of verse 20. And Moses took the rod of God. Yeah. In his hand. Now I'm going to let you in on a little something. If he had been sitting on that mountain watching Moses when he started that bush, I'd said, what's that in his hand? You'd said, stick. Yeah. When he come down, I'd said, what's that in his hand? You'd said that same old stick. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the same old stick. No. Right. Right. See, God didn't want Moses' stick. Yeah. God wanted Moses to give him a stick. Yeah. So he could impart divine power. Yeah. And turn the shepherd rod of Moses into the rod of God. Yeah. So God didn't want Isaac. He was going to turn Isaac into the promised seed yeah. that God yeah. had given him. Wanted Abraham to know it and to believe it. God doesn't want your life so he mess it up right. or cost you something yeah. or keep you from being happy. Right. He wants to take your life. He didn't want that little boy's lunch. He wanted them yeah. loaves and fishes so he could bless them and break them. Yeah. Impart yeah. divine power and yeah. do with five hush puppies and two sardines yeah. what nobody else could do yeah. or never could be done. And God, if he can take an old dead stick and instill his power, yeah. turn it into yeah. an old shepherd yeah. rod to the rod of God, what can he do with your life? Yeah. What can he do with my life? Yeah. If we turn it over to him, get full of God and swell up in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
I almost see in my mind. He gets down to Egypt. He gets an audience with Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, how dare you show your face here again? Moses said, I ain't got time to fool with you. The Lord God, Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, let my people go. Yeah. Pharaoh said, where's your God? I said, mate, let me go. Yeah. Where's your God's army? Where's your God's military weapons? Right. Where's your God's might? What your God got? What have you got from your God that ought to make me let my slaves go? Right. Moses said, I got this stick. Yeah. Yeah. You imagine how Pharaoh laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Moses said, I got a stick. Got God's stick. Yeah. Pharaoh laughed and no doubt all of them in that palace and that day laughed in the score. Yeah. But they didn't laugh when the water turned to blood. Yeah. 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 They didn't laugh when locusts and flies and all yeah. them right. plagues came. Yeah. They didn't laugh. When the death angel passed and the firstborn was dying. They didn't laugh when the Red Sea opened and let the children of Israel through. Yeah. And then came in drowned chariot, horse, and rider. They yeah. didn't laugh then. Yeah. I'm telling you, it may not seem like much. It may not be much to anyone else. But your life full of the power of God. Wouldn't you like to walk out of here tonight? Not just being a Christian. Yeah. Not just being a church member. Yeah. But being so full of God. Knowing that you are the man or the woman that God yeah. intended for you to be. Yeah. 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 He yeah. says his stick. I'll give you this and I'm finished. Verse number five, we see he's living in victory right now because of the source of Moses. Amen. Look at verse number five. That they, God's talking to him, said that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers. What's now? The God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have appeared unto thee. Yeah. Now it's no different sometimes in the King James Bible, but here in this text did you notice that God said that they may believe the God of Abraham come, yeah. the God of Isaac come, and the God of Jacob. The yeah. first thing you notice about the source of Moses is that our God is a personal God. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't just say go down and tell them that, that uh, the God of their fathers right, is right. said. Not just the God of the father's children. Right. Not just, but he said uh, not just the God of the people of Israel. Are you with me? Yeah. Not just the God yeah. of the church. But he made sure to say I'm Abraham's God. Yeah. And I'm Isaac's yeah. God. Yeah. And I'm Jacob's yeah. God. Yeah. And I'm Pastor's yeah. God. And I'm Weaver's God. Yeah. And I'm your yeah. God. Yeah. And I'm her oh, God. Yeah. I'm glad I serve yeah. a personal God. Yeah. Not a God way up there in heaven anymore. Yeah. Not a God just way over there on a certain hill. Yeah. Not even just a God down here at the house. Yeah. But a God who took up residence and yeah. made his abode yeah. in my a God that walks yeah. with me and talks with me. A God that cares about me. That looks after me. That watches over me. That provides for me. Yes. Amen. He's a personal God. Yes, he is. But in those names I see that he is a particular God. He said, the God of Abraham. When he said the God of Abraham, he was telling Moses, you tell him, the God of covenant. Yeah, right. Genesis chapter number 12, God made promises to Abraham. Yeah. yeah. Genesis chapter number 15, God, God cuts a covenant with Abraham. Yeah, he does. Now what actually happens is, Abraham takes the animals, divides the animals, separates the birds, lays them out, and when they cut a covenant, this kind of glory of God would come down. Abraham and the glory of God would walk between them pieces. Oh, yeah. You ever been to a wedding? Yeah. You ever wondered why the groom family sits on one side? The bride's family sits on another? The bride comes down by herself. They don't walk down together. Right. Then the preacher turns and says, I'd like to present to you for the first time. And they take hands they walk between those two families. Yeah. See, marriage isn't just a contract. That's right. right. They're cutting yeah. that covenant. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Genesis 15, if you're familiar with your Bible, 
uh, Abraham laid those animals out and has to beat the buzzards off yeah. of them. Yeah. But when they cut the covenant, any of you Bible scholars know what Abraham was doing? I'm going to tell you. Somebody said it. Sleeping. The Bible says that a heart of great darkness came upon him. Yeah. And Abraham went into a deep sleep. Yeah. Weaver's country commentary says he is sawing logs. Right. Right. Yeah. Had two chains off. Right. Yeah. So Abraham's laying over our sleep. The Shekinah glory of God comes down and walks between the pieces. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and let you in on something. It's called the Abrahamic covenant. Yeah. Technically, God cut a covenant with Abraham. Right. But the truth of the matter is, God cut a covenant with God. Remember, he said, when I could swear by no height, right. Yeah. Right. I yeah. swear by myself. He right. said, Abraham, I, God, yeah. swear to me yeah. that yeah. I give you everything I said. Yeah. Abraham's laying over there saw in love. He don't have any idea what's going yeah. on. God walks through and cuts a covenant and makes the covenant rest. That's why when Abraham went into Hagar's tent and he's going to help God out when getting an heir, God didn't come along and say, you ruined the contract. You messed up your part of the deal. Right. I'm ripping it up. I'm done with you. Right. I'll go get somebody yeah. else yeah. and start over. No. He told him, you will have an heir out of the womb of Sarah. I promised it to you and you will have it. That's why when Jesus was hanging between yeah. heaven and earth, bearing my sins in his own body shedding his blood to wash them away God got up walked over and cut the Genesis 1-3 line out and the universe went dark darkness that locked me out darkness that locked the Son in with the Father and what happened in that darkness was God the Son yeah. for the covenant yeah. of God the Father for a no account yeah. meal here, boy. Yeah. That's why it yeah. don't rest on me. That's why I went after yeah. I got saved and I made mistakes and a sin yeah. and I made yeah. the wrong choices. Yeah. Jesus didn't come along and say, I'm taking my salvation back. You yeah. messed it all up yeah. and kicked me off yeah. into yeah. hell. Yeah. He said, no, the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. cleanses us yeah. from yeah. all yeah. sin. Yeah. 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 Said the God of Abraham, yeah. the God of covenant. He said the God of Isaac. When he said that, he said, I'm the God of completion. Yeah. Amen. You know, Sarah finally bought into the fact she was going to have a baby boy. Yeah. No doubt she told it. They said, That's wonderful, Sarah. And then when Sarah wasn't around, they said, Let's pray for Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. lost her mind. She's 90 years old and married. Yeah. She couldn't have a baby if she wanted one. Yeah. They wouldn't even let her adopt one. She's too old. Yeah. 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 That's right. But when that midwife walked out of Sarah's tent and looked at Abraham, and they heard a baby cry. And he said, Abraham, it's a boy. Yeah. Amen. That crowd that didn't believe said, I knew God to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew God to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember nothing else I said tonight. You ought to write this down. Never forget it. The promise of God and the performance of God, one and the same. That's right. Maybe 25 years before Isaac's born, uh, but he's as good as born when God promised yeah, him. Right. Maybe 13 years before David sits on the Amen. throne, sure. but yeah. David was king yeah. the minute uh, yeah. Samuel anointed him. Yeah. He may have a promise. It may not be come to you yet, but if God promised it, he'll see it all the way through. He'll complete it. Remember, I'm going to give a word that chokes independent Baptist up. Yeah. It's the word predestinated. Oh, yeah. This book says yeah. that I've been predestinated yeah. right. to be conformed right. into the image of his yeah. Dear son, you look up here and you say, I don't see much of Jesus up there. Hang on, honey. He ain't a finish yet. Yeah. Yeah. I read the story about a master sculptor who uh, was teaching a small sculpting class. And he had a tarp over something. He told the students, I'm going to rip this tarp off. When I do, you immediately write down on your paper what you see. He reached, said, one, two, three, here we go. Pull it off. They wrote, they wrote down. He went around the classes, set seven up in it. Everyone he asked, what do you see? They said, a big block of marble. Yeah. Every one of them always said, a big block of marble. Finally, one of them said, Professor, what do you see? He said, I see a marble love. Yeah. He said, we don't see it. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take his hammer 
I'll take his chisel. And I'll knock everything off this block of marble. Doesn't look like an elephant. Yeah. Until you can see. When I get finished, you'll see then. Yeah. Yeah. What I see now. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. for all these years, yeah. over 30, yeah. has been taking the hammer of that word yeah. and the chisel of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he's been knocking Sydney off here. Yeah. He's yeah. been knocking everything that didn't look yeah. like Jesus. And yeah. one of these days, uh, oh glory land boulevard, I, yeah. I'll come running by you and you'll grab me and say, hey, you that crazy guy preached at Landmark. Yeah. I say, I am. You'll say, you know what? You look just like Jesus. Yeah. I mean, what he, he sees now. You don't see it now. Right. But what he sees now, you'll see then. Yeah. A false head being confident of this very thing. Yeah. He that has begun a good work in you will perform it. Yeah. Will yeah. finish it. Yeah. Will yeah. complete it. Will see it all the way through. Yeah. He is the God yeah. of completion. Amen. Said the God of Abraham covenant. The God of Isaac completion. I give you this and I'm finished. The God of Jacob. When he said I'm the God of Jacob, he said I'm the God of compassion. Yeah. yeah. I know it's in Malachi. I know it's in Romans. So let's go ahead and hit it. Amen. The Lord said, Jacob, I loved Esau. I hate it. Yeah. That's what he said. Preacher, what in the world are you going to do? I preached in the book of Romans twice when I was pastor. And I want the pastor to give me permission. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I did with it when I preached it. If you were to ask me outside the church, I was not, I'm not a prophet nor a prophet's son. I wasn't raised in a preacher's home. My daddy was one of them old time, the kind they would use as a poster child for defunding police. Yeah. Head busting, backside kicking, hard nosed, mean as a rattlesnake. Yeah. Hated everybody, ill all the time. Right. So I was raised, oh, they were kind of smart and, and yeah. soft right. and, and this whole feminine age in between right. them. Yeah. I was raised a lot different. Yeah. And I don't have any problem understanding why God would hate Esau. The right. Bible said he was a profane person. Basically, that word profane meant that he was against God and that he hated God. Right. He was an idolatry, yeah. worshipped himself. Yeah. Yeah. Never a blessing God had. For him, wasn't worth a pelt bowl of pinto beans to him. Yeah. All he ever cared about was what I want. Me, yeah. me, yeah. me, yeah. me. That's all. Right. I don't have any problem. My problem is, how could he love Jacob? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you read the Bible, Jacob just a song. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. He was a hill snatcher from the day he was born. Yeah. Con man, never worked an honest day's living in all his life. Stole yeah. from his own daddy. Where yeah. I'm from, he used to say, he ain't worth the gunpowder. It take to blow his brains yeah. out. Right. But when there was two nations in his mama's womb, God told her they yeah. two kingdoms. Right. There's two nations in your womb, and the, young, the elder will serve the younger. You say, how do you explain all that? I ain't got to explain all of it. All I know is when he should have hated Esau and he should have hated Jacob, he said, I love Jacob. And if he can love that hill snatcher, yeah. that con man, yeah. that nobody, yeah. I believe he can love no account. Yeah. Low down hell deserving yeah. sinner yeah. like me. Yeah. The least loved of my parents, an outcast, yeah. a reject, didn't think anybody loved me. I'm yeah. seven years old, sitting in a little Sunday school class. My teacher's still alive. Amen. She read in some verses, said, Jesus loved me. Taught me that song, Jesus Love Me. I spoke to her. I preached in my home church about three weeks ago. Spoke to her. Miss Flora Hap set us down and said, Jesus loves you. Seven years old. I said, Miss Flo, Jesus, she remembers me. Put myself in the chest and said, Jesus loves me. Yeah. She leaned down and put her hands on both sides of my face. Got right in it with a big smile and said, Sydney Weaver, Jesus. Loves. Amen. 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 I didn't get saved then. But I'm 54 years old tonight. Yeah. And I ain't never got over the fact yeah. that yeah. Jesus yeah. loves me. He loves me. Yeah. 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 Jesus loves me. Yeah. He loves me. He loves me. You can walk around with yeah. yeah. your shoulders hanging yeah. if you want to. Yeah. But yeah. the God of glory, who should have broke my back, yeah. put it in the yeah. rest yeah. hell, yeah. put his back yeah. on yeah. and hated yeah. me. Yeah. 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 Me to know Jesus 
Jesus loves me. He 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 loves me. When I'm good, he loves me. When I'm bad, he loves me. When I'm up, he loves me. When I'm down, he loves me. When he shook, he loves me. When I was to everybody else, unlovable. He loved me. He loves me. Jesus loves me. I'm living in victory. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bow yeah. for prayer. Father, yeah. take the truth Amen. of the word and the power of the Holy Ghost. The feeble effort of thy servant. May not a one of us walk out here tonight with a head hung down and shoulders drooping. Amen. Live poked out. But may we live right now in victory. So when we face that giant, we won't be looking for it. We'll already be living it. Grant it to me so I pray for Jesus' sake. And I'll ask you this and I'm finished. What's that in thine hand? And what are you going to do with it?